I've just returned from yet another amazing Cambodia trip, and I think it's time for me to give back to the travel community. This is a guide to Cambodia, a connection to my favorite people, places, and experiences. I believe we live in a very special time where a person can pack a bag, fly across the world, and be connected with only a few people that will take their adventure from ordinary to extraordinary. Hello everybody. Whether you are a backpacker, a car driver, bus taker, or motorcycle rider, this video is for you. We will be looking at eight cities, multiple national parks. We'll be going from the beaches, the jungles, and of course, the temples of Angkor. So with that, let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of A Cambodia Guide. In this episode, we're gonna be saying goodbye to Koh Kong and hello to Osam. Now Osam is 120 Ks away, and that's about four hours if you keep your butt on that seat. The main thing I wanna show from this portion of this episode is I wanna relate just how far away and how isolated you are when you're in the jungle. So this is kind of a do as I say, not as I do type thing. Um, so the story goes, I set up my camera and I'm like, Travis, let's uh, get some wheelie pictures. And he's like, that's a great idea. And then this. So it's just one of those things. Ooh, every time I see that, I cringe. That is cringeworthy right there. Um, but it's just one of those things. If something bad can happen, it likely will. So the more you can kind of keep yourself out of danger, the better. This is in no way Travis's fault. Um, I had large fault in this. Travis is a very good rider. This is just something that happened. And I think it happened because we really didn't appreciate just how remote we were at that time. And we could have easily ended up needing to go to a hospital, which is more than a day away. So keeping that stuff in mind is very, very important. And in my opinion, this was more of a failure on my part than anyone else. I like to say that I'm confident, not cocky, but in this case, we definitely crossed that line into cocky and we got burned. Ah, the beautiful jungle of Cambodia. Tall grass, red dirt, red mud, broken bikers. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm a little sore. That's what happens when you go too high up. <laughs> I'd get patched up here. I have a feeling tomorrow's gonna be one of those days where I don't want to move much, but make a good story, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had just a little a little incident. No big deal. Just a little scratch on the mirror here. Yeah, but all's well that ends well. We're right by a river. We're gonna hang out. And uh, yeah, it's good. Just taking a little breather. All right, well, moving on, let's go to our first waterfall. One of the reasons why I love Cambodia so much is because there are places like this. So here we are in the middle of nowhere at this massive waterfall, and we're the only ones there. That's right, the only ones there. Maybe a few people a week come to these places. You have it all to yourself, and it's so amazing.
This waterfall is about 40 kilometers away from Osam. And departing here, we were only about an hour and a half away from the village of Osam. This trip took closer to eight hours for us because of our delays. But once we reached Osam, I was very happy to show my three new friends why I love this village so much. I often say that Osam is a place where a traveler can have a unique experience, and I feel like that is going away around the world. Everything's getting westernized, and everyone is trying to give tourists what they think they want. And Osam remains a village with its own identity. I definitely recommend to organize this trip and think that they might stay a few days because um, most of the people, I guess, who travel in, in Cambodia, they want to see the, the high spots and, uh, and they have the reasons for it. But if you go a bit in the outback of Cambodia, you just end in this kind of place. And, and I think you, you learn more about Cambodia, about the people, because you're a bit far away from all the tourist economy. And, um, and that's, that's quite deep, yeah. <laughs> Long-term travel can be difficult. You're often very far from home, you don't understand the language, things are confusing, you feel isolated even though you're surrounded by people. But one thing that every human understands is family. Somewhere else I think just read, heard the name. And then, but, yeah. Yeah, but we didn't know what to expect yeah. really at all. We were all really keen on meeting this Mr. Lim because we've yeah, read a yeah. lot. And, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody who we met in Koh Kong and mentioned that we are planning to go to this Mr. Lim, they were like, oh yeah, Mr. he's Lim. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> everybody knows Mr. Lim everywhere. <laughs> when I met Lim, it was very clear he was building a community to share the truth about life in Cambodia. I'm happy to report that people are in fact drawn to the truth and things are going well. The real truck explore karma. Adios. 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 Lim has a very simple idea of connecting tourists to the locals that can offer a service. Let me introduce Gao. This is his family. They live in Osam and they own a small shop where they sell goods. But it's just not enough to make it by. So when there's tourists in Osam and then they want to go on a hike, Lim calls up Gao and he says he has tourists here. Would you mind taking them through the jungle? Keep them safe. Take them to the waterfalls. Take them to the places of interest. Show them what is special about the jungle. I really think these interactions are special. There's no middleman. You're connected directly with the individual who is interested to show you why they love this place they call home. And while they're doing that, you're having this incredible experience, oftentimes beyond language, just with the experience that you're having. Definitely, it's um, off-road, it's um, yeah, like off the map, off the grid, so if you want to experience a real Cambodian life, um, see how families um, yeah, live. Yeah, plus the place. Since this community is very new, there's actually a lot of work that needs to be done, and that can be one of the best takeaways there is, is knowing that you helped. To join our activity, like to take tourists to the cardamom, to take tourists to explore by boat. So we have boat. We have motorbike, we have boat, and we have small truck to explore the cardamom too. If the, yeah, and, and this year, you know, we have more taxis coming from Posat directly to Osam, and from Osam to Kokong. Easy to find out, not, not difficult like before. So if you enjoy coming through the cardamom, 
you can come from Siem Reap to Badenburg, Bosat, and then to Osam, Wilwang to Osam, and then you can go to Kokong. From Kokong, you can to go to Cap, you can go to Kabot, you can go to Senowil, you can go back to Phnom Penh, or you can go to Thailand directly. Easy way. Yeah. And you can see the natural thing, the natural way, and beautiful jungle surrounding here. There's literally so much that you can do in Osam. I think you'll plan on spending a few days and you'll likely spend a week. That's just the way it goes. Like here, we're in the crocodile sanctuary here and we're heading out to a small, small village. It's actually not even a village, just a few homes where uh, I'll be delivering some photos that I took on my previous trip. But I mean, there's just so much to do and see every day you will be busy and interacting with people that are living a completely different life than you. So as Lim said, you can take a taxi to this location. And one thing that I think is kind of cool is Nick is actually offering his motorbikes in Osam. There's Nick right there. He's renting his motorbikes now because many people are coming by taxi. He's got more motorcycles than I can count and they're well-maintained, no Chinese parts. I'll leave a link to his video. And also, um, another guy who's out there who's just built a beautiful home and also a beautiful guest house. Um, his name's Matt, and he's from Australia, and he is really interested in creating a Western experience for those who may be coming, say, from a college or something like that to study the jungle. So for those long-term um, people that are going to stay for a month or two months, he's offering more of a Western experience. There's Matt there at his place. Um, so I'll definitely link him below as well. So this is a very special community because you have so many different types of people, types of backgrounds, and they're living together, they're working together, they're really benefiting by this, this beautiful community that is growing out in the jungle of Cambodia. As I put this video together to offer my contacts and my experiences to others so that they may come and have a fantastic experience, I'm reminded of the very first time that I came to Cambodia and I wanted to ride across the jungle and everyone told me don't do it it's too dangerous don't do it you're there's no roads don't do it um, you'll get injured and I just didn't take the advice I just kept going and through that I ended up meeting all of these amazing people and to be honest I've ridden in jungles all over the world so I keep coming back to this one and it's not because I love the trees or splashing through the water is is a, a little bit better here. It's because of the people that I keep coming back. It's a hidden gym, really. Actually yeah. nobody told us about this. Yeah. No, Whoever I mean, had anybody who recommended it, we've just like bumped or like found it online yeah. just by accident. So. And I think we're almost quite lucky because maybe in a few, five, ten years, it's going to boom a little bit. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, I could go on about Osam for hours, but I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks a lot for watching this episode. Be sure to come back for the next episode where we go to Bottom Bang and we slip and slide out of the jungle. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. And of course, ADV on. <laughs>